issues like women's employment, uh, their work environment, and as well as their participation in planning and management in the industry. So let me, let me ask you, mm -hmm. when someone thinks about K-A-W-T, yes. that's it, yes. right? I've got yes. it right. Yes, you got it right. I struggled with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we call it couch. You can go, you can go with couch, yeah. Okay, yeah. couch, thank yeah. you. So when someone thinks couch, mm -hmm. is it just tourism or it's... It is tourism, mm -hmm. tourism and hospitality. Um, um, so we, there was a study done in 2019 mm -hmm. by UNWTO. And they did uh, a global report on women in the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the figures showed that 54% of all employed people in the tourism and hospitality industry are women. And when they looked at uh, employment in general, only 39% of employ employed people were women. But in tourism, it's fifty-four percent. So there was a need for for us to to um, you know form this uh, grouping to 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 address women issues in in the tourism industry because as much as we are fifty-four percent of um, the workforce in the tourism and hospitality industry, we are only in the lower jobs. You you find. Uh, Women are employed in, in, let's say, housekeeping jobs, uh, receptionists. There's a certain um, mm. like category mm. that, that is you know, reserved for women. Mm. And yet we have uh, very professional women who, who can take up leadership roles. But we're still in a patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, because of that, um, women don't end up in, in our industry getting the top jobs. If you look at all, you know, like the big hotels, you look at uh, the training institutions, it's men who are running mm -hmm. um, these institutions. So w what we are trying to do is, um, first of all, create awareness that we do have professional women um, in the industry and, and also give them that empowerment and motivation and courage to to rise up and and take up those roles, um, but there are just a few things you know that seem to work against women, like like going on a maternity <laughs> leave. <laughs> yeah, you know, mm -hmm. you came from a woman who who went on maternity leave. Yeah. I I did as well. We all do. So uh, I'm not sure at which point it became a bad thing mm -hmm. for for women to go uh, on maternity leave. But in our industry, we have unfortunately seen. Um, Cases where women are, uh, you know, they go on maternity leave and come back and your job is gone. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so we are there the to media. fight. Yeah, yeah, it happens everywhere, but we're, we're here to, to sort of uh, claim, claim our space mm -hmm. and, and uh, encourage women to, to also speak up mm -hmm. because it's not a bad thing to go on maternity leave. Ah. Yeah. So it's a whole rounded um, it is. Uh, it is. conversation, it a whole is. rounded association. Because in my mind I was thinking... When we hear about women, yeah, tourism, yeah, we we know <laughs> hostesses, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. That, like my my layman's thinking is that, yeah, when you hear women and tourism, when you put them in the same sentence, ni he, uh, hostesses, yeah. um, this, this receptionists at the hotels, and then those ladies that speak nicely to you and they take yeah. your bag to the room, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, so yeah. it's it's a whole. It's it's very holistic. We have um, five committees ah. in our association. Um, there's a membership committee which is everybody, uh, and then we we have other committees which we encourage our members to to join. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the mice committee mm -hmm. uh, that deals with events and and conferences. Um, we've got the CSR uh, committee because uh, we're cognizant of the importance of um, conserving our flora and fauna, um, as well as also giving back to, to the community. So our CSR um, activities are, are quite vibrant. We have um, our initiative uh, that we started called Turning Tourism Green, which is our tree planting um, initiative that, um, uh, you know, 
to date we've we've planted over 50,000 trees in all the various counties where we are represented so um we do you know conservation uh, uh projects we have um uh giving back to to society in terms of uh looking after people with cerebral palsy we have um school of the blind where we give uh, you know white canes um so we have different projects in in uh, csr that that uh, enable our members to also give back to the community because the community is where we get mm -hmm. our members it's also where we get our clients then we have um, a very vibrant training and mentorship committee mm -hmm. um, here we train uh, and mentor the young practitioners in the institutions um, you know teaching them soft skills which are not taught in the curriculum we also uh, teach them best practice for you know to prepare them for the job market when they come out of um, when they graduate from the institution so that one is really really vibrant um, last year we trained over 500 uh, students uh, in the various um, institutions we actually have uh, mous we've signed with uh, some of the institutions like kenya Tele college mm -hmm. we've signed with um, ihti which is international Hotel and Tourism Institute. Um, we've got Amboseli Institute of Hospitality and Technology, and uh, University of Embu, who have uh, Tourism and Hospitality Department. So we work closely with these, and you know, we we have training sessions um, where we take their students through through some of these skills that are not taught, um, you know, in in um, in the institutions. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. You've mentioned something to do with flora and fauna. What's yes. that? Um, flora and fauna is the, the, the uh, vegetation, you know, like, you know, the greenery and, uh, and uh, the animals as well. Ah. Yes. You must get to flora and fauna. Because, <laughs> you know, Gaelish names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, you go, when you go on holiday, um, mm -hmm. some of the things you look for are, are a good scenery, mm -hmm. Uh, you you go for game drives to 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 look at the animals to see animals learn about animals so that's all flora and fauna yeah ah. yes yes okay. yes yeah so how how is the association founded it was founded by a group of women in the in the industry um, as I mentioned before you know they saw there was need to get um, a, a grouping together to to address the the particular issues that women face in the industry especially uh, in terms of getting employment and and you know creating a, a, a favorable work environment for them our needs are very different from men's needs uh, some are similar and um, you know when we do our trainings we train both men and women but um, we we now go beyond that to 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 sort of um, advocate for the women because uh, women's needs are, are, are different and and they need to be um, addressed and they need to be sort of um, included in in the HR of any any establishment uh -huh. yeah. Okay. yeah so how many members do you have we currently have uh, just slightly over 200 oh. we are represented in 23 counties uh to date uh and at our agm this year we're launching our 24th county which is trukana mm, nice. and we're very excited about that um and and it's you know it, it's a, a good coincidence that the government is also looking at uh um you know welcoming the world back home to to mm -hmm. to, to trukana mm -hmm. to kenya so um the semi-arid and arid areas have not really gotten the, the attention they need in terms of what they have to offer um, in tourism. And, and yet, you know, they have a lot to offer, apart from some really remarkable places um, in, in, in those areas. They have cultures that we all need to uh, be aware of and, and, um, and enjoy. 
So, so part of our objective of uh, opening and launching Trucana is, is to open the space uh, to the tourism industry and show the world that there is something else to see in Trucana and in other semi-arid areas and as, as well as, um, you know, help them grow, um, uh, you know, in terms of facilities for, for tourists. They are still growing. Uh, there is there is room for 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 more um, facilities to be put up, but the locals also have an opportunity to join the tourism industry. They have an opportunity to learn skills that can now open them up to other counties and to the rest of the world. So, especially the girl child, um, because we look after the, the women, we we would like to give them the the courage and and empower them to reach out and, and um, you know, get these skills so that they can also now get out there and bring back income to their community. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So you have a conference coming up. Yes, we do. <laughs> Tell me about I'm excited to hear about yeah, it. Yeah, we're actually also very excited about it. It's our first conference mm -hmm. as, as a COUT. Um, it's going to be on 31st of uh, January this month. And... Um, we're looking at uh, various topics uh, to discuss, uh, but the main objectives for the conference are first and foremost to um, to um, bring up our the profile of our association and create awareness that we are there in the tourism space. And the other objective is to fundraise mm -hmm. for um, some of our projects. The topics we are discussing um, are sort of touching on these uh, projects that we have, like um, climate change and how it affects women in the tourism industry. Um, I don't know if you've, you've seen, um, there's been like a rise in, in um, uh, you know, um, loss of jobs because of climate change. Um, there's a lot of um, damage of uh, destruction of natural resources because of extreme weather conditions. And, you know, women in, in, um, in, the, in the traditional role are the ones who, like, you know, go to the farms and, you know, from the farms, that's what now feeds the, the hotels, the, you know, um, the, the hospitality establishments. We've also got women going to fetch water. So when we have extreme climate conditions, women have to walk long distances, um, you know, just to fetch that water, um, which also puts them in danger in terms of, you know, being attacked in the, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on the way or, you know, um, getting tired and you still have to come back mm -hmm. and do your household chores. So, so women are affected by climate change in very many ways. Um, there's also been loss of jobs because of, you know, the extreme, um, weather conditions and where there is loss of jobs, there is stress. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the domestic section, you, you find um, because of that stress, then there's gender based violence. Um, so women end up um, sort of vulnerable to, to the harsh realities of climate change. We're also going to discuss uh, safety and security of women, mm -hmm. especially women traveling alone. Women. Um, Women tend to travel alone uh, a lot more often than men. Ah. It's very hard. I, I, do you know any man who goes on holiday alone? Uh, no. Have holiday you, heard of, no. Have you no. ever heard of any? No, really. But you've heard of women? Yes. Yes. Women go, they travel alone. Uh, it's part of their wellness. It's part of, uh, you know, adventure. And they have the money. You know, now women are, um, they are empowered and, mm -hmm. and they have the money and, and they, 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 they like good things. Yeah. So, so we're looking at um, having a discussion around the safety of women because sometimes women get attacked in hotels if you're alone. Uh, you, somebody knocks the door and then, you know, so we're looking at having discussions around um, ways of securing um, the safety of women who travel alone. Um, so that's going to be a very uh, interactive uh, discussion. And um, as we mentioned earlier, we, we are now seeing um, 
unfortunate incidents of women being being uh, uh, you know murdered in in Airbnbs, which falls under hospitality. Mm. So, so we're hoping that uh, the policymakers uh, and the security forces will will come up with something permanent um, and effective to to assure the 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 safety of everybody, because everybody um, should be uh, you know assured of their safety. We're also going to discuss um, the role of women in decision making. Um, so we've got, you know, decision making starts from home. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a mother, uh, so, you know, uh, right from home, the, the decision maker in terms of how the home is going to be run is a woman. Mm. And um, so we're looking at, you know, when we escalate that to the corporate section mm -hmm. or we co escalate to the social uh, scenario, how are women empowered in decision-making positions? Um, are they given, are they um, empowered to, 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 to get to those positions without uh, having to fight extra hard, you know? Because f for, for most women who, who have gotten to leadership uh, positions, it's always been a fight. It's always been, you know, I, I had to do <laughs> extra, more, you know, yeah. way you more. Have to really prove yeah, yourself. Yeah, you really have to prove, but you don't have to prove yourself. We all go to the same schools as the men. So, so um, we're trying to create a, you know, a discussion around uh, sort of equalizing the playing ground, f uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the market, the job markets, so that, um, you know, women shouldn't feel like it's, it, it's a favor to, to be given or to, to get certain positions, but it's their right because, you know, they are qualified. Mm -hmm. um, we have women in, in our association that, um, uh, you know, we, we've got a pool of, uh, of different age groups from, from youth to the more mature women, and it gives us um, a good feel of um, the various things that affect women in the different age groups, and and we also get shared uh, shared knowledge, you know. So so these women are are, are um, professional in their own rights, and they have uh, gone to various events as speakers, as trainers. So they are qualified, and there are other women out there that are very qualified to, to hold leadership positions and to make decisions. And um, so, so our, our view is that um, the, the diversity in, in, in terms of gender is not, um, it's, it's not a privilege. It's, it's actually a catalyst for success. So the more we include women in decision making, um, the more successful the organization will be, mm. the, the more successful our country will be, the more successful the world will be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are the conversations uh, yeah. we're trying to bring. Another very exciting topic uh -huh. that we're going to have on that day is um, about a technology and innovation uh, um, in the fields of p persons with disability. Oh. Um, we have persons with disability who travel on holiday. We have persons in disability with disability who work in the tourism and hospitality space. Um, and we're trying to, to have that conversation that uh, they too have a right to, to um, you know, be employed. Uh, if, if you have somebody who has uh, a particular disability, it doesn't mean they cannot do a certain job. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are many jobs, uh, if, if you have somebody who is confined to a wheelchair, they can be uh, a receptionist, they can be a cashier, they can be, uh, you know, um, uh, maybe even work in the, in the bar, mixologist, because they, ca they have other abilities that um, they should be allowed to to, to utilize. Mm -hmm. We have uh, people with disability, uh, persons with disability who travel as tourists. 
And when they travel, there's a lot of money that we're not um, uh, taking uh, into account because when they travel, they travel with some with you know other people to accompany them, and and that's revenue that we could be earning as a country, but because our facilities are not accessible for them, then they will skip Kenya and then choose a country where the infrastructure is more favorable. Uh. Yeah, and persons with disability um, are not just um, uh, people either who have um, uh, loss of sight or hearing or, or, or mobility. We have um, old people who need assistance to, to move around. We have injured people who also need assistance to move around and they need the infrastructure um, to, to feel safe in, in um, a, a facility. We have children. Um, you know these doors, like your door here, with a very um, strong mm -hmm. suction? If, if a six-year-old child goes to uh, the restroom, the washrooms, and, and the, the door has the suction, and it's, it's a strong one, the, the child can easily get caught up in that door. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. because it's not conducive for them. Some places have uh, different um, restrooms for, for children, which is, which is uh, commendable. But uh, we need to bring those kinds of conversations and awareness so that facilities um, know that it's their responsibility to take up care of everybody um, in, in their various um, abilities. We have... Um, uh, uh, people with autism, uh, you know, that's, that's also uh, um, falling under PWDs. And some of them, depending on the spectrum, are able to travel on their own. But they have prob uh, difficulties or challenges around communicating um, um, their needs. So, so we're looking at having discussions around how do we accommodate um, and train our our employees in, in the tourism and hospitality industry mm -hmm. to be able to, 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 to cater for these specific needs um, because it's still revenue that is coming. Yeah. And then it's also a space for, for um, people to be employed, um, you know, whether they have um, uh, one ability or another. Um, and then there's, there's the ramps. You know, mm, there's a time. Yeah. There's a time. Everybody in Kenya, all that's the buildings. The most common. Yeah, that one is. Everybody was told you must have a ramp. You must have a ramp, and they go and put ramps without understanding that uh, you can have a, a really steep ramp. That and then you know, th if somebody is on their own with a wheelchair, they will struggle to go up or down that ramp, or even if they are being pushed, if it's very steep, you'll end up toppling over each other. So, so these are the kinds of, um, uh, you know, sensitivities we'd, we'd like to, to, to bring to people's awareness um, in terms of facilities, uh, in terms of training, um, so that um, everybody feels that, that uh, they are also mm -hmm. entitled and welcome to enjoy the tourism and hospitality um, hey, facilities. That's a whole broad... Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think yeah. for us, especially, I'm not talking about media, people in the media, but just generally, like for common wananchi. Yeah. Generally. Me, when I hear tourism, <laughs> my mind goes to watch at Mombasa. <laughs> then we go to Mara, yeah. see wild animals come back. That's tourism for me. Yeah. But now, when you discuss it, I realize there's a whole there's so much. wide spectrum so around much. it. And I'm yeah. like, hey. Yeah. I think we need an education, uh, yeah. like an educative class. Your, your generation knows Mombasa, you know the Mara, you know Dubai, you know yeah. Zanzibar. Those are the things. And it know. ends there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot. There's, there's sports tourism, there's health tourism, there's uh, gastronomy, which is about food. Like, you know, w the coast, uh, Western Kenya, the, you know, every, every culture has. has um, there are cultural foods that, that also need to be enjoyed by other people. Mm. They, they have different ways, even if when you have um, uh, similar cultures, they have different ways of, of cooking. 
of, of presenting their foods. So th th there's a lot more to, to tourism. Y y you've mentioned culture, and then I remembered, I don't know if this falls under your category, but yeah. I just remembered the other day, um, I was having a discussion, two things. One, I was having a discussion mm. with someone in who runs a tourism agency. Yeah. He was here, and I was, was, was asking him, are we selling Kenya as a travel destination to the world? What exactly are we doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. One. And then two, the other conversation that has come to my mind as we were having this, as we, you mentioned culture, was there's a conversation that was dominating um, spaces mm -hmm. towards the end of last year where they were talking about, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Turkana as, as one of the countries yeah. you're putting on board. So there's, there's that part where people were like, does Kenya only have one heritage, like culture to showcase Masai Pekeake? You know? <laughs> yeah, and, there, and there I'm are wondering. so many. There are so many cultures. And even with, with, within, um, like if we look at one tribe, you might find the, the tribe has fragments that, that have a different, um, you, you know, uh, culture in terms of speech, like um, Amakamba. So, if, if you know, Kambas from, from Makweni have a different way of speaking um, mm -hmm. compared to Machakos and Kitui. So, you know, when we look at culture, it's, um, it, it's really diverse. And, and uh, I know that the ministry and, you know, our strategic partners like KTB mm -hmm. have, have been really pushing in terms of uh, looking at, you know, tourism, beyond the Maasai's, beyond Mombasa. So it's work, there's work that's being done mm. and uh, it, it takes the whole of, you know, the whole uh, tourism industry to sort of rally around um, uh, these, these topics and, and, and try and, and get people. It, it's taking time also because, like you say, everybody wants to go to the coast. Everybody wants to go to the Mara. And the Mara, for maybe the younger generation, they think it's boring. So they all want to go to the coast and have their parties there. And, you know, but if we, if we open up the other counties, um, like now we are represented in 23 counties, we are, our aim is to open up um, the tourism industry to, to these counties to see, because everybody in, in, the people in that county know best what their attractions are they know best w which are their s little hidden gems, you know. So the minute we, we start opening up the, 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 the counties, they also now take ownership of selling their county. They take ownership of employing from their communities. We're working with Ecotourism, which is also um, one of our partners, to, to reach into the communities and, and source, you know, uh, employment from there. Source, sort uh, to to sort um, source uh, staff from mm -hmm. the communities because they are the ones who know best where their hidden gems are. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones now we want to bring out to the world. Ah, amazing! Yeah. So, how successful have you been in empowering women? We believe we have been successful. We are still trying to raise our profile, um, which is part of the reason we are having. Um, the conference because we've been there since 2011 but um, there are not very many people who know mm. about us yet so the conference is going to help us to raise our profile um, you know educate people of the benefits of joining um, especially people in the tourism and hospitality space so yeah we believe we've uh, for us to get to 23 counties mm -hmm. um, and the 24th coming up we think, uh, you know, 1%, uh, you know, better than <laughs> the other yes, year. Yeah. It's, it's a milestone. Yes, true, yes, true. yes, yes, yes. Uh, what are some of the challenges you've experienced? The challenges um, include, you know, the, the, the patriarchal um, uh, mentality, uh, which is a mindset that we are working um, hard with our male counterparts as well. Because, you know, we, we can't just work as women alone. We need the men to also um, understand the, the value that women bring mm. to the table. So um, th that, that is a bit of um, uh, a challenge for us. Uh, another challenge is funds. Uh, 
because mm -hmm. we are non-profit. Um, everything we do is, is voluntary. So, and these are people who are also employed elsewhere. So um, the funds for us to, to, to run our projects um, is also a challenge. But we are working on that with, um, with the conference. And uh, by God's grace, we'll be able to get enough at least to start one mm -hmm. good project. And then, you know, next year, another step, another step. Yeah. yeah. Keep moving, keep yep. moving. Absolutely. As we bring this <laughs> conversation to a close. Yes. Time moves very fast. Yes, yes. As we bring this conversation to a close. Tell us something else we would want to know about Count. Um, what else would you like to know about Count? Count, Count is, um, we believe in, in um, empowering women in the community. Uh, we have a program uh, uh, service excellence. So every time we have our AGMs, every year we go to a different county, not just to see the attractions of that county, but also to honor and, and, and appreciate the women who have made an impact in the community. So to date we have um, awarded um, over 12 women um, in, in the various counties who have done something in, in mostly in conservation and um, but also in empowering women in their own space. And we also um, award, we, we give uh, cash awards to the best female student in the um, institutions, the hospitality mm -hmm. institutions. Um, so we go for their graduations and we award the best female ah, student. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Now, on a personal note, let me bring it home. Um, okay. Very <laughs> personal, personal note. Sure. This is where I love ending this conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a woman, what can you leave the house without? I cannot <laughs> leave my, <laughs> mm, my phone. <laughs> <laughs> five things. Okay. I forgot to tell you okay. five. My phone. Uh huh. Uh, my ID. <laughs> so I have a little pack with all my cards. Uh -huh. So I can't leave the house without that. Uh, of course, the house keys. Mm -hmm. um, how many are those? Three. Three. Um, my specs. This of us that can't do <laughs> without specs. Um, what else? And my hair. My hair has to be done. <laughs> Five. On the road, are you a cheetah or a tortoise? On the road, I. Uh, um, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I, I'm not a tortoise. I've never been a tortoise. Uh -huh. I can be a cheetah. Uh -huh. I can be. I can be depending on, you know, the situation. If there's a, an emergency, I will drive on two wheels. Mm -hmm. So, but most of the time, I'm safe. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are you a heels person or a flat shoe person? I have always been a heels person, but now with age. <laughs> <laughs> but I wish I wore them. I should have carried them just, <laughs> just to pose. But I, li I love heels. Well I love, 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 love heels. Well <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, you very much for having where us. Where we can find, uh, where yes, we can find you? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, so you can find us on, uh, we're very active on LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, that's uh, K-A-W-T at um, sorry, let me start with our website, www.couts.or.ke. Um, on uh, LinkedIn, it's uh, Kenya Association of Women in Tourism, or KAWT, and the same with Facebook. We are also on Instagram as KAWT. So, yeah, but <laughs> we are more active with uh, on, on uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. I forgot to ask you, how does one become a member? You just need to log into our website. Mm -hmm. We have a membership um, page. Uh, you need to be in the tourism and hospitality sector. And um, we're actually reaching out to the youth, which is one of our committees as well, uh, because they're the ones to take, you know, the association uh, to the next level and, and, you know, into the future. And, um, uh, the youth subscription fees are, you know, 2000 So 
it's, it's, we're actually looking at uh, recruiting more youth to, to join and uh, then we can mentor them and mm -hmm. then they will be able to now socially be uh, mm -hmm. confident enough to take it up. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for your Asante time. Sana. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Thank Thanks you for, for having us. us. <laughs> you know, so and welcome, to, Mombasa, welcome to the industry. <laughs> Asante. Asante yeah. Sana. That was Jackie Kali talking to us about tourism, women in the tourism space. I hope you've been you, I hope you've been educated. Uja 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 sema tourism saini kiku ukiwa kwa nje unaanza kusema tourism ni kwenda tu Mombasa na kuvaa bikini. Please <laughs> let's be educated. Kwanza ile tourism is a whole wide space. Spectrum. Mm. And we've been having that conversation on women in tourism, women empowerment, and stereotypes that mm -hmm. surround women in these spaces. That is the strength of a woman. <laughs>